on, on Politico today, actually, about Snapchat um, hiring to get people ready uh, to, to get ready to cover the uh, uh, the uh, presidential uh, campaign in 2016, which is actually which is well underway right now. Um, and this is a, this is a cool thing. We're we uh, being people in, in in my profession are just kind of figuring out what Snapchat is. I know a colleague of mine uh, had a a week long uh, Kiplinger fellowship at at the Ohio State University. It's just completely coincidence. I'm wearing this and mentioning this. Um, uh, and 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 one of the one of the platforms that they covered. This is a, a, a comprehensive social media thing uh, for for old media folks like me. Um, but one of the things that they covered uh, fairly extensively was Snapchat. Um, Snapchat has added uh, a dozen or so dedicated channels for uh, for uh, mainstream media uh, outlets, um, and and some of them are doing some really cool stuff. I don't I don't know if the Washington Post is one of the the channels that a Snapchat is uh, has. Um, uh, 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 let onto the platform, but but they do really really cool stuff. Um, that's a, that's something that you can you can subscribe to, um, just as a uh, uh, as a um, a, a daily uh, feature mm-hmm. that they add to as they go through the day. Um, it's something that I don't know really well. I will admit that, but I, I've played around with it a little bit. But it's interesting to me to see what yeah. There's a there's a, a quick look at uh, mm-hmm. you can see some of the outlets there. You can see CNN and some. Uh, in the Food Network. Um, uh, Daily Mail is a part of this. Um, um, but that, but that's, but this is uh, this is something that, that folks in my business are just uh, starting to um, uh, to pay attention to. I, I'm curious what what you guys would think as someone sort of on the other side of this uh, equation. Uh, if that's something that um that that you would watch, that you would follow, um, whether it's presidential campaign or just kind of more mainstream news in general, is this a, a viable thing? Uh, is that Snapchat is a, a, a good place for this to be? Is it um, when I think Snapchat, I automatically think of a younger audience than us. <laughs> is that mm-hmm. bad? Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's kind of when when I was doing my talk last week uh, over at Carnegie Library, it was like this is Snapchat. You in this room are not going to understand why this is a popular thing, but you want the people who are probably right. So yeah, exactly. But so, I mean, it's a it's a nice it's another outlet. It's another way to connect with them and on their own mm-hmm. terms in uh, own turf essentially, and you can target all the the. Um, stuff towards them and what maybe they're more interested i mean i might not be interested in a particular topic that somebody you know in their 60s 70s you know whatever who's not using this particular medium might be you know it's you know more into one thing and they're more into another thing so you can kind of target your message too and maybe something they might cover more of something versus something else i think it gives them the ability to split demographics to your point mm-hmm. um bringing in that that younger audience and i i'm not familiar with voting demographics but i'm guessing the younger audience is the less the lesser of the likely to go out and vote and to get involved and engaged and to me that this is, is that is correct this is probably mm-hmm. this is definitely a way to get them engaged um yes. as far as a model for news delivery for me um if there was more technology news i would mm-hmm. probably get into that and then it would probably lead me down the path of oh I'm out of tech news to read. I'll go check out CNN or I'll go check out this or that. Um, I'd be interested to see what the intersection of like Flipboard users are versus Snapchat versus whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So so for me, I would rather use something like Flipboard because it seems to aggregate other media networks as well, um, which is why I like Flipboard. That that makes sense to me. Just in, in terms of, of demographics, I know, you know, John, you're you're of the age. Or, um, uh, the thing that I read as I was uh, looking into Snapchat and after finding the story today was uh, something like, if you were born after, or if you were born before 1985, you will not ha- understand Snapchat at, at all. <laughs> no, um, no. What did you? Read? I was. Oh, I, I graduated from high school in 1985, so I'm 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 well within that category um and 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 i and i and i love flipboard and i love what it does um as an aggregator and just a, how how stuff is presented i still think it's one of the most elegant things i've i've ever come across on the internet um but but uh it, it i i think flipboard is something uh where that can that can reach a, a sort of a wider demographic um you know, which is maybe why John, you know, someone like you is a little bit younger than I am. You're going to look at that, and you're going to look at Flipboard, and um, but you may have a greater comfort with Snapchat than than most of the folks who would be who would be my age or, or older. Yeah, and that's one of the interesting things is there there was there was was that the Oregon Trail mm-hmm. post that you were you were referring to that you read because that was actually a really good post. Carla actually pointed it out to me about 
there's like this there's like an in-between age group of like the people that were born in the late 70s and up through like 82 right. where it's this weird intersected demographic of i can still remember eight tracks i can still remember records and tape cassettes <laughs> and yes. and all of those things and and I'm right at that brink of, you know, you came home from school and you jumped on AOL, but that was more towards the end of middle school and mm-hmm. and, and through some, some of high school. So I can mm-hmm. remember a time when the personal computer wasn't in everybody's house, but a lot of people had them. Mm-hmm. And then into college when just right before Facebook and, and MySpace was big, Facebook hadn't really launched, made out past a couple campuses, things of that nature. So I feel like I am in that in-between generation yeah. of... I, I like this, but I can also understand both sides mm-hmm. of, of what's going on as far as Snapchat versus Flipboard versus let's go old school and let's just grab RSS feeds from everything because that that's another way to do it for the more right. technical people. Right. And, I, and I still do. Like, well, and that's where I like, I look at that. It's going to be interesting because I think there's going to either, there, there's going to be a segregation point where people... There's, you're going to have like the ultra techies and mm-hmm. you're going to have the people that don't care to figure out how things work or what to do or whatever. And they're going to be your Snapchat user, but you're still going to have those people that still go into IRC chat. And I remember um, going on to AOL back in the day and right. <clears throat> like old school news groups and things of that nature that still exist and are still very popular. But I just do not. I, I see them being for the more technical um, I'm kind of digressing from your point, but uh, yeah, I totally agree that you're going to have to start targeting demographics purely based on what social media network you're you're on, and you're going to have to probably sooner or later be on all of them. Mm-hmm. Especially for a big brand like that, mm-hmm. you just you just want that penetration everywhere. Uh, you know, whereas you know, I'm, t- I'm talking with smaller people, it's like, no, you got to pick one yeah. and do it good <laughs> before you move on. And and is there crosstalk? You know, Pinterest to your Facebook and everything like that. And my big thing with this uh, is it's very limited. Uh, again, part of that conversation was like, uh, pay attention to this. There's the Discover tab. There's a lot happening here. You're getting your Yahoo and Kitty Kirk's on there, and and there is news here. And it's really intriguing, and it's reaching out to that audience that's there in Snapchat, but you don't have access to it yet, right? Maybe mm-hmm. you know, maybe maybe the news, maybe the Post Gazette will at, at some point, but can me as whereas I can go on something like Clamor that we've been talking about here and be a mm-hmm. media presence as Sorgatron Media. I can't go on Snapchat, be Sorgatron Media, and have that same level of presence as these guys. But then again, you know, there's that argument of the parody, and and you know, uh, you know, like YouTube. Any, I'm as equal on YouTube as far as content as any of these properties, right? Right. Uh, so maybe they're just kind of making a little bit of a gatekeeper there uh, to take advantage of that because right, they're the ones that are going to pay money, right? Do they have the ability? The thing- the thing is, you guys just said about um, uh, about tailoring content, maybe even down to specific platforms. I think that's that's a that's a really really good point. Um, uh, what the Washington Post does, and I, I haven't checked out all of the all, all the different channels that are, that are available now, but uh, in watching what the Washington Post does, um, a, a big reason why it is it is so well done is because it is edited. It is uh, someone who is familiar with the platform. I, I don't know mm-hmm. who the folks are, um, but someone who's familiar with the platform. Uh, takes the time and builds stuff that works for the platform. Um, and, and if more outlets can do that, whether we're talking about Snapchat or, or, or other platforms, um, 